All right, what's up guys? It's Bill, we're back in the shop. Today we're gonna to talk about loading gear on your bike for a trip. Um, we're gonna start with sort of a general overview and some safety stuff, and then we'll go into each bag individually uh, that I have set up here on this bike. So one of the first things to consider when you're putting gear on your bike is the center of gravity. So if you have uh, tools, heavy things, you don't wanna put that in the top of your bag. You know, you wanna to try to get that stuff loaded down low. So on the Xfil 48, it's got a tool compartment right down here, low, kind of behind your back, that's a good place to put heavy stuff. Um, that helps keep your center of gravity low where it's gonna be predictable uh, handling wise. On something like the XFIL 7, I use this bag as a, as a tool bag, um, and it's also a really flexible setup like the 48 because you can clip things to it. So you can clip things on with molly or with straps onto the top or the sides or use carabiners. And then with the compression straps on the front, I use layers. So like I'll roll up uh, a layer, like in this instance, it's a sweatshirt um, or maybe it's a rain jacket, whatever. I like to put that stuff on the front and then if I decide that I need it, I can pop it off without opening anything, put it on and just tighten up the straps and I'm back to good. Now with a heavy bag full of tools like that, I want it to be physically supported. I don't want to hang it just off the straps. If you hang a bag full of tools just on the straps, at some point it's going to break. It's just going to vibrate, it's going to slap back and forth and it's not gonna be safe long-term. You're gonna wear out the straps or you're gonna wear out whatever you've got it hung on. So you can see this one is supported by the headlight and it's supported in four places by the straps. Uh, that allows it to, to, have, to hold plenty of weight. One thing that I like to do is add carabiners to things. I'm just a weirdo about it. So on the back here, this bag is totally secure, but if I put a carabiner through the grab handle and through the top of the sissy bar, now it stays centered and you can do that on just about any of our bags, like the XFIL 80 actually has a strap that goes through there. Um, but then carabiners come in handy for all kinds of stuff. You wanna just clip your ball cap on there, you know, you wanna clip your hat on there, that's more secure than just putting it through the sissy bar. So on the 48 or any bag, but this one specifically, I like to put the daily stuff, or not even daily, the hourly stuff that I might need in the most accessible pocket, which is gonna be the top pocket. So I can unzip this guy and I've got you know, monkey butt powder, I've got a headlamp, because you never know, um, sunscreen, lip balm, that kind of stuff. It all goes in there, and none of it, since this bag takes a minute to get off, uh, none of the stuff that I have in there is terribly valuable. Like, I don't put my wallet in there, I don't put um, extra money, whatever, because that's something that I have a hard time, like if I go in a restroom at a, a gas station, I can't really defend that stuff in that bag, so I either have that stuff on me, or move on to this, I put it in the tank bag. So the XO11 is great for your uh, carry bag. So you can see there's kind of different levels to the stuff on your bike and the way you pack it. So the seven I keep on all the time because that's got my tools. I need that no matter what. I need that if I'm going to 7-Eleven down the street or I need that if I'm going coast to coast, I need those tools. If not for me, I might need them for some other rider. The 11 pops right off, it's just magnets and I can take that with me anywhere I'm going. So if I'm going, in a bathroom and I got extra cash in here or I have a firearm or I have something that I don't want to leave unattended, there's nothing to it. It's just magnets. I just pop it off the tank and I carry it with me. Uh, one of the unique things about this bag is that it's got easy access zippers on the side. You know, it's a little bit of a pain to open the top. It takes just a little bit more labor and a little bit more time. But if you have something that you want to quickly access from the side, well, you can just go in through a single zipper and get what you need. And that also allows you to keep things hidden under other stuff on there. So it's not really available. Say you got to open this, um, you know, in front of people, you may not necessarily want them to see everything that you got inside. So in summary, uh, stay safe, pack the heavy stuff down low, tidy your straps, make sure all your shit is zipped up and buckled. There's no reason to have a, a buckle and a strap sitting there not connected. It takes zero labor to put those two things together. And if you are lazy, if you are complacent, that's how you get hurt. So tighten your stuff, make sure that it's secure. Every time you stop for gas, just wiggle, wiggle your gear. Just make sure, just give it a, an eyeball. Just look at it, make sure zippers haven't opened in the wind, whatever, and always be concerned. Another thing to consider is when you're riding, look at your buddy's gear. So if you're riding beside somebody, man, it's a really good time. You can see more than he can. He can't tell what's going on with his bag that's behind him but you can see he's got some bungee cord hanging off or a strap off of his bag and it's getting close to his chain. That's a dangerous situation. So pull up and point, get him to pull over, get him to tighten his shit up 
and make it right. So Bill just explained to you guys how he likes to pack for his trip on his bike. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about some specific tools and parts that I like to carry when heading out on a trip. I like to use the Xfil 7 in conjunction with an Xfil 0 inside to carry my basic tools. Let's see what I got in here. I've got my Zero in here with all my basic sockets, wrenches, ratchets, screwdrivers, allens. I also have in my Xfil 7 a voltmeter, a test light, and some zip ties. For my larger parts and tools, I like to use an Xfil 80. In the main compartment, I like to carry a jump box, as well as my other stuff for the trip. This is a nice little handy jumper if you have a dead battery or need a boost. These are always handy to have. In the large front compartment, I like to carry my large wrenches that don't fit in my Xfil 7, jog of oil line and fuel line. I also like to have some rubber gloves as well as mechanics hand wipes for working on stuff. And I like to keep my, what I call junk drawer of parts that you might need on the road in here. And let's go through this now. So let's see what I carry in my junk drawer. Oh geez. All right. Headlamp, obviously, so you can see what you're doing if you're in a nighttime situation. I like to carry some spark plugs that I pre-gap them and then I put them in these protective containers so the gap doesn't get disturbed, a lighter. I like to carry travel size Loctite blue and red as well as some anti-seize. Some hose clamps, you never know when you're gonna need those. Also, it's a good idea to throw a zip tie to consolidate all the hose clamps together. Safety wire, always gotta have some of that. Let's see what I got in this bag. Exhaust gaskets. Man, if you ever lose an exhaust nut and the gasket gets nagged out, it's always good to have some. Some jets for your particular carburetor. Whether you're coming from elevation or heading to elevation, it's always good to have some jets on you so you can tune your carburetor as needed. I also like to carry a valve core remover with some valve cores and some caps, just in case you get a leak and you have a suspect valve core, sometimes that happens, so it's always good to carry some with you. For electrical stuff, some various size pieces of shrink wrap, a jog of wire is always good to have, some electrical tape, various fuses, big and small. And even if you don't use a big or a small one, there's always someone that needs a fuse. So I just carry some extras just in case, as well as some terminals, butts and ring terminals are always good to have. You never know if you're gonna need one on the road. So I like to carry those. And now, the hardware. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, GD. Exhaust nut bolts. Man, these are a fine thread. That's not one. These are fine thread, and I always carry some because you never know when you're gonna need one if you, if you lose one. Random nuts and bolts that you might have on your bike. It's always good to carry. Brake bolt, brake disc brake bolts. These are special size. One of those backs out and you lose it. You always wanna make sure you have the correct amount in there. So I carry a handful. Cotter pins and axle clips are always good to have. You might lose one on the road. A buddy might need one couple of vacuum caps for your carburetor if your carburetor has those uh, outlets. A master link for your particular chain. 
Now, remember there are different chains out there that require different master links, so make sure you carry the one for your particular bike. And here is an important one. These are bolts for battery terminals. Man, you lose one, you can't connect your cable, your bike ain't gonna start. So I carry obviously more than enough in case I need one or one of my friends needs one. And one other thing I have in here is the little clevis pin for a rear brake. Sometimes these cotter pins find their way out. You might lose your pin and then your brake won't be able to actuate. So I always carry one of those setups. So that's basically it in my junk drawer. You can see all this crap. Probably need to do a bit better job of consolidating, but this is what I carry. So these are the tools and parts that I like to carry when I'm heading out on a long road trip. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to rebuild your transmission on the side of the road, but this will help you get along if you have a minor breakdown. How's it going? Bill talked about how to pack your bag. My friend Rob talked about what tools and parts you might need on a trip, and I'm here to talk about food. My name is Otto. We go on these trips, a lot of times you don't know when you'll be stopping for gas or for uh, snacks. You stop for gas when you need gas. Snacks you might not make time for, so I like to always have some sort of backup kit in my bags. Um, I love coffee. Again, you don't know when you have time to stop for coffee, so I always have a little coffee kit. I've been dragging around this jet boil setup for a while now. You just got your basic jet boil. You can buy that online for about a hundred bucks. Get a big fuel canister because it sucks to run out of fuel when you're trying to make coffee for your bros. This is my proprietary blend of uh, coffee beans. Uh, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And uh, I always drag that around. Collapsible pour over. You know, I'm a big fan of the pour over. You can make it as strong or as weak as you like. I think if you can see the bottom of your coffee cup, you're not doing it right, don't even apply. You're gonna need coffee filters, you know? And then for some of you guys that uh, can't handle my coffee, I bring tea. Also in my bag, uh, I bring a little, a little extra goodies. Um, no matter where you're eating, if the food sucks, you throw some hot sauce on it. Hot sauce keeps forever, doesn't go bad. In the apocalypse, it'll be uh, cockroaches and hot sauce. Aspirin, when you're old, you'll understand and you'll appreciate the aspirin. Encased meats, I don't think these things were good when they were made. They definitely don't go bad in your saddlebag. Always bring some encased meats. Uh, worst case, they turn into beef jerky. Cliff bars, I'm a big fan of the cliff bars. They don't go bad either. Uh, it could be 110 or it could be 40 below and the cliff bar is still gonna give you a little bit of nourishment, get you through that day, get you to the next Denny's. So it's getting to be the end of the day. You're making that last gas stop in preparation for an early morning departure. You stop at the gas station. Uh, you know you're gonna be huddled up around a campfire. You know you don't have a grill. Um, you're, not, you're not carrying a bunch of stuff because you're on your bike. You can't go wrong with a couple hot dogs. Um, all you need is a stick to warm them over the fire, a couple buns if they got them. A cup of soup will do it in a pinch. You can use your jet boil again for that cup of soup. But you just grab that stuff at the end of the day at the last gas stop and you'll have some food for the night. So if you're traveling with the chase truck, obviously you can bring a full-size Weber and 18 packs and all that good stuff. If you're on your bike and you're moto camping, you're not going to have a lot of room on your bike. So we'll grab a small bottle of whiskey or something like that to get you through the night. If you uh, have your medical marijuana card and you're smoking that night, I recommend just bringing your weed in the jar, not any sort of pre-rolls, stuff like that. It tends to shake itself loose and uh, by the time you get to the campsite, it's pretty beat. So that's all the tips I have for traveling on your motorcycle and keeping hydrated and keeping caffeinated and staying high. Um, you, pack, you pack a coffee kit and you're always gonna be the most popular guy at the campsite. You have a little bit of weed, you're always gonna be the most popular guy at the campsite. Uh, if your bike's gassed up and you got some water and you're ready to go in the morning, you're always gonna be the first in line to get out of camp and that'll keep you popular as well.